bless you, my viewers. I believe and I know God has a plan and a purpose for you for today. And I want to bring to you our teachings once more. We are building on what we started looking at. Understanding this force called favor. Enjoying this favor from the word of God. Uh, we read in Numbers 11 verse number, or we'll be reading Numbers 11, 11. Let's begin from Numbers 11, 11. The Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore have you afflicted your servant? This is a man of God and he's asking a question. If I am a servant of God, why am I being afflicted? And many of us as men of God, it reaches a point, your body attracts affliction, not because you have sinned, not because of anything, but afflictions have just invaded your life. Paul, the great apostle, says, Lord, there is a thorn in my flesh. Take it away. But God said, my grace is sufficient. My grace has the power to suppress, to oppress that affliction or the thorn in your flesh. So Moses said to the Lord, wherefore have you afflicted your servant? And allow me to pray for you as a servant of God. You could be going through financial affliction. Financial affliction. You cannot afford anything for your family. You cannot afford anything for your ministry. God is on your side. I want to promise you, God is on your side. Don't look down. Don't give up, but look up. And God will come for you. God will appear for you. That was a scenario Moses had. And he said, wherefore have you afflicted your servant? Why? Why have you afflicted your servant? And wherefore have I not found favor? So favor is a force that eliminates affliction. Because if I attract favor, I will never attract affliction. So Moses asked a question, wherefore have I not found favor? Favor is a power that every man, every woman requires. Because I said here, favor will always cause those who disregard you to regard you. Favor will make people who disregard you regard you. And he said, if I have found favor, if I have found favor in your sight, why can't you regard me? And that you lay the burden of all these people upon my life. So anytime favor is in your life, anytime you command the anointing of favor, number one, afflictions are suspended. Number two, you will never carry burdens that are unnecessary in your life. Hey, So Moses attributed his affliction to lack of favor. Moses attributed his sufferings to lack of favor. May favor lift up the burden in your life this December, January, come February. You will enjoy. You will enjoy favor. Every time you contact favor, afflictions must disappear. So anything that resembles affliction in your life, it must catch fire in Jesus' mighty name. You can't carry favor and drown in life's matter. You cannot carry favor and be ignored. You cannot carry favor and be despised. That is what we don't know. Is a lack of favor in the life of Moses. It meant that he has been disregarded. He has been ignored. That was his cry. If I have found favor, why is this burden too heavy for me? That is what many of us don't ask ourselves. You cannot carry favor and be demoted. And I pray, whoever demoted you, by virtue of favor, may you be elevated again. May you be elevated again in Jesus' name. You can't carry favor and be disgraced. Anytime you contact favor, grace takes away disgrace. In Jesus' mighty name. You can't carry favor and be assumed. Anytime favor rests on your life, people who assumed you will resume again. They will resume. So favor prevents you from embarrassment. 
favor will prevent you from embarrassment. It will prevent you from drowning in life's issues. Let's look at the same numbers. 11, verse number 15. 11 and verse number 15. This is what Moses said. And if you deal thus with me, kill me. It reaches a point. You don't see the reason of living. So lack of favor can push you to your grave prematurely. But it will not happen in Jesus' name. It will not happen. When Moses asked God, why are you afflicting me? Verse 15, he says, if you deal thus with me, if you handle me with disregard, without honor, hey, kill me now. So there are people who reach a point, they are saying life is unfair. So why should I live? What you are lacking is favor to take you to the next level. Kill me. That is what Moses was saying. Ha. If, my goodness, this is important. If you deal with me thus, then kill me. I pray thee out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wretchedness. My goodness, this is important. Let me not see my weakness. That is the cry of Moses. Favor will terminate wretchedness. Favor is God's readiness to use you to the next level. Favor. That is the cry of Moses. If I have found favor in your sight, let me not see my wretchedness. So, favor terminate wretchedness in the life of a believer. Any man or woman that contacts favor, hey, Jesus Christ, they eliminate the favor you attract or contact, it will always terminate wretchedness. God's favor is readiness to use you to the next level. At the same time, favor is a power that accelerates your prayers. Favor will accelerate your prayers. I may not know how long you have been praying, but favor will accelerate. Accelerate. That is what we are calling divine speed to what you desire. Favor is a secret to changing levels. Changing levels. You may look so beautiful, but men don't look at you twice. What is the problem? It is lack of favor. And favor will take away that wretchedness, that evil mask that the enemy has put on your face. So favor is a secret of changing levels. Favor is a secret of changing or to changing levels in life. I'll be reading Esther chapter number 5. Esther chapter 5 from verse number 1. Listen and listen to this. Favor, the power called favor. When favor is lacking, labor is present. And labor without flavor, it has no favor. That is something you need to understand. You need labor and favor together. But favor is more superior to labor. Esther chapter number 5, verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and she stood in the inner court of the king's house over and against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house and over and against the gate of the house. Listen to this verse number 2. And it was so... When the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor. She obtained favor. She attracted favor. She received regard. My goodness. She received unfair partiality. That is what favor does. Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, listen to this. When this queen Esther stood by the gates or stood near the king. Let me read this again. The third day, when queen Esther, this Esther, she has put on her royal apparel. She stood in the inner court of the king's house. What happened? Over and against the king's house. And the king also sat upon his royal throne. This, that means the king was sitting on his royal throne overlooking where Esther was standing. 
Verse 2 it says, And it was so, when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, Listen and listen to me. Favor will make eyes turn where you are. Favor will cause people's eyes to turn where you are. And I pray today, if you are a businessman, you are a businesswoman, may this favor turn customers where your shop is. May this favor turn customers into your hotel, your restaurant, in Jesus' mighty name. It says, when the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court, she obtained favor. Favor is obtainable. Favor is obtainable. And this week, this month, and January comes, you are going to obtain favor without limitation. Favor without limits in Jesus' mighty name. She obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden. He gave out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. This was the rod that the king was using. So immediately Esther found favor in his sight. The king held out to Esther the golden scepter. That means any time favor locates you, finger of success will be upon you. The finger of success points your direction. Very, very important. Very important. That this queen, Esther, she obtained favor. And I pray for somebody. You will obtain favor. Even your children will obtain favor to go to the best schools in Kenya. You are still, or your children will obtain favor before the government and they will be able to go to the best schools ever in Jesus' mighty name. Listen and listen to this. As I read, oh my goodness, some of you favor will be knocking your doors after today in Jesus' mighty name. After today, you will enjoy this grace in Jesus' mighty name. I'll be reading Jeremiah 52. Jeremiah chapter number 52, a very interesting story that carries a lot of power. Jeremiah 52 from verse number 31. We all know a very wicked king that was called Nebuchadnezzar. He took hold of a king of Judah that was called Jehoiakim and jailed him. He put him in prison. But later on, Nebuchadnezzar died, and his son, who is now called Merodach, Merodach, evil Merodach, he took over the kingship. So we begin from, that is Jeremiah 52, verse 31. The Bible says, And it came to pass in the 7th and 30th year, that is 37th year, of the captivity of Jehoiakim. Very strange. This man was jailed for 37 years. He had been in jail now the 37th year of his captivity as a king of Judah. Now in the 12th month, like December, that we may call it, in the 5th and 20th day, that was 25th, actual, this is what we are calling Christmas. This is the time this king was uh, released from prison. It was a Christmas, 25th day of the 12th month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, he lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of the prison. Jesus Christ. He brought him out of the prison. Listen and listen to this. He was brought out of the prison. And as we read on, I'll explain later on. He brought him out of prison. Verse number two, he spake kindly unto him. Number three, he set his throne above the throne of the kings that were in Babylon. Number three, he changed his prison garments. And he did continually eat bread before him all the days of his life. 34. And for his diet, there was a continual diet given of him, the king of Babylon, every day a portion until the day of his death, all the days of his life. 
These are what I have observed in these scriptures. When favor rests upon your life, the first thing, Jehoiakim was released from prison. Favor will always move you from captivity. This man found favor before this evil king called Evil Merodach. He found favor before the king and he was taken out of the prison. Listen to this. I am praying for somebody watching me this morning. May you be released from the prison of sickness, diseases, and poverty by virtue of favor. By virtue of favor, you'll be released from the prison of shame. That prison of stagnancy in life. May you come out in Jesus' name. When favor arrives, your release is announced. When favor arrives, your release is announced. And that is what will be happening to some of you that are watching me today. Whatever arrested you will release you by favor. Jehoiakim was jailed by Nebuchadnezzar for 37 years. And after Nebuchadnezzar died, evil Merodach became the king. And his first year's rule, he released the king out of uh, prison. That is what favor does. Number two, the king spoke to him kindly. King spoke to him kindly or he spoke kindly of him. I pray that people will give you regard. People will also now begin accepting you in Jesus' name. May God surround you with good people and kind people. Number three, he gave him a seat of honor. He gave him a seat of honor. Favor will give you a seat of honor. Where others receive dishonor, you receive a seat of honor. He gave him a seat of honor. In other words, he was given prayer, pro, um, prominence. He was given prominence and preeminence. That is very important. He was elevated. He was given recognition. That is what favor will do for your life after this broadcast in Jesus' name. Jehoiakim, after release from prison, he was given the seat of honor, prominence, elevation, and given recognition. That is what I'm calling the power of favor, the force of favor. After today, God will give you the seat of honor. Favor will move you forward. Favor will move you and push you forward. I prophesy, may favor invade your business today. May favor storm your life. May favor incubate your life from today in Jesus' mighty name. May favor pursue, overtake, and cover your life and your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Favor will disallow demotion in your life. Favor will disallow, discontinue any form of demotion, shame out of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Favor will break protocol in your life after today in Jesus' name. It will terminate shame out of your life in Jesus' name. Number four, the Bible says, he changed his prison garment. Some of you are putting garments of shame, garments of embarrassments, garments that do not give you the right identity. People think you are 50 and you are 25. That is the wrong garment you are putting on. People look at you think you are married and you are not married. You are just 22. But you have a garment that makes you look a married woman. He changed his prison garments. Oh my goodness. Favor will change your outlook. Favor changes your outlook. And that is what will be happening to you this season of celebration. This season of holidays. Favor will change your outlook. God will change your wardrobe. May your outfit change after today. In Jesus mighty name. Favor will change your outlook. Favor will change your wardrobe. He changed his prison garment. There are problems that come with their garments. The blind Bartimaeus had a garment of begging. 
And the day he was called by Jesus, he threw away his garment of begging. His life changed. So there are garments we are putting on in life. These are garments of shame, embarrassment, garments of shame, garments of rejection. I command them to catch fire in Jesus' name. You will never, you will never be undermined by any man. or any, You will never be undermined in Jesus' mighty name. When favor arrives, your clothes will change. He put aside his prison garment. Your garment determines your size in life. If you put on the garment of favor, that garment of favor determines your size in life. My goodness. Your garment determines your associations. People who associate you, there is a garment you can put on and they will all scatter. They will never follow you again. Garments coincide with the rise and fall of a man. So the garments you put on before you leave your house are important. Are they garments of favor? Are they garments of fame? Because the outlook determines your inlook. Jesus' name. Oh my goodness. When the children of Israel went to spy the land, the garment they were putting on was the garment of a locust. They said we were like locusts before the Canaanites. And that is how we were in their sight. We were like grasshoppers. That's what they say. In other words, the garment they were putting on was the garment of a grasshopper. May that garment that makes you inferior be burnt to ashes. That is how they looked at themselves. They said, we saw the land, the place, the cities are good. But now we are putting on a garment of a grasshopper. In other words, our enemies look stronger than us. That garment that makes you inferior. It shall catch fire in Jesus' name. That garment of inferiority, rejection, may it catch fire in Jesus' name. So I repeat again. He put aside his prison garment. The prison garment was put aside. Secondly, understand, your garments will determine your size and your garments will determine the throne you will sit on. That is important. The garment you put on determines the throne you will sit on. Your garment will determine who associates with you. There are people you will not associate with from today. Grace lifts up somebody to another level. Listen and listen to this. Your garments determine your associates. If your garments are inferior you will attract inferior associates. May that never be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Numbers chapter 20. When Satan wanted to disgrace servants of God, he took away the garments. I'm reading Numbers 20, 26. Listen to this. Listen to this. My goodness. Numbers 20 and verse 26. The garments of favor. Numbers chapter 20. I'm reading verse number 26. Very important. It says, but we can start from verse number 20, 25. It says, take Aaron and Eliezer, his son, and bring them up to Mount Hor. Listen and listen to this. God told Moses, take Aaron and Eliezer, his son, bring them up unto the Mount Hor. Very interesting. Look at this. Verse 26. Strip Aaron his garment. Jesus Christ. Strip Aaron his garment and put upon Eliezer, his son. Some of you are not even aware. That your garment of success was taken by somebody else. The day your sister began to put on your clothes, she put on your virtue and carried your favor. Very important. And I repeat, the day your garment was exchanged, that means 
your favor was also exchanged. The day Jacob put on the garment of Esau and went to be blessed, he carried the blessings of Esau. That was the end of Esau. And I want you to pay a lot of attention here. The Bible says, Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them upon Eliezer his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people and shall die there. What was preserving Aaron was a garment. The day the garment was removed, Aaron died. I want to pray for you before I wind up. I may not know who stole your garments. Your garments are missing in your house. You can't explain who took them. We'll continue from there. Because the day Aaron's garment was taken and put on Eliezer, his grace, the favor left him. I pray for you today. I pray for you this week. That whatever garment was stolen out of your life, the garment of favor, the garment of success, you are doing so well in your business until you realize one of your dresses was missing. One of your top was missing. Things began to go down. I pray in Jesus' name. Everyone that stole your virtue, whoever exchanged your clothes, whoever exchanged the favor in your life, I speak restoration in Jesus' name. I speak restoration in Jesus' name. May this season of holidays, you attract and I compel favor to look for you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. I announce favor will work with you into your business and your career will be decorated by favor this day. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me see you tomorrow at the same time, the same channel. This is the Oracle Television Network. The future is here. And this is none other than Dr.